Huge news coming out of the NASCAR Cup Series garage. The number 14 team of Chase Briscoe slammed with one of the biggest penalties we've ever seen. Dustin, what exactly are we looking at with this? Well, like you said, major penalties, massive penalties from NASCAR's point of view. Uh, NASCAR fining the crew chief for Chase Briscoe, John Klausmeyer, $250,000 and suspending him six races, along with, along with penalizing Chase Briscoe and the number 14 team for Stuart Haas Racing, 120 points and 25 playoff points for a counterfeit part on the car. It was a counterfeit engine Nakaduck that Elton Sawyer, NASCAR Senior Vice President of Competition said, uh, was discovered in inspection at the R&D Center. Briscoe's car was one of a co some of the cars taken to the R&D Center for further teardown, and this was where it was found there. Now, Greg Zipidelli, um, Competition Director for Stuart Haas Racing, issued a statement saying, quote, we had a quality control lapse and a part that never should have been on a car Going to the racetrack ended up on the number 14 car at Charlotte. We accept NASCAR's decision and will not appeal. So, you know, massive penalties, and it really puts uh, this team in a hole for sure. I know. It was huge news to me. And I think that the, one of the biggest things is we really haven't seen this team running in the top 10 regularly, running in the top 15 regularly. They seem to be kind of uh, fledgling. And so – what were they looking for? Is that clear yet? Yeah, Ellen Sawyer said, look, anything like this is, a, is it, it can be viewed as a, as a competition advantage or trying to find a competition advantage. And you're not going to put something on a car that doesn't help the competitive edge. You know, I, I think one thing that's interesting to look at is when you look at these inspection uh, related infractions this season, obviously Hendrick Motorsports, Colleague Racing, Richard Childress Racing, among others, that NASCAR has issued nearly $1 million in fines already this season. And there's still 22 races left in the season. You know, the, the, the number of fines, it, you know, it's $975,000. It's more than triple of what NASCAR issued in fines last year to teams for inspection-related infractions. And I did ask Elton Sawyer about that. And one of the things he noted was that, hey, look, this is the second year of the next-gen car. Teams have had more time with it. They've had an off-season with it. They've had an opportunity to kind of start looking more what they can try to do. Now, obviously, with the single-source parts, you're not supposed to be touching them. You're not supposed to be messing with them. But obviously, teams are going to try to find any advantage they can for as close as the competition is. I mean, look, you know, you know as well as anybody, Kim, and, and how many times have you been on pit road talking to crew chiefs or drivers, and it's all about track position, track position, track position, and anything that you can gain, even with a little, little type of advantage, that means a whole lot on the track and can mean a whole lot in terms of a, a strong finish and, and a strong points day. You know, last year, Brad Keselowski and RFK were hit with, at that time, it was a major penalty. And then you mentioned the penalties we've already seen this year. So with this penalty, with as hefty as it is, does it finally send a message to the other teams to not mess with these cars? Well, and that was something that, that Elton Sawyer talked about with us uh, to some reporters uh, the other day, was just that basically trying to change the culture of the garage and trying to look, you know, when these when when North NASCAR went to the next gen car, they they extend they made the deterrent system, uh, you know, even stronger and said, look, you know, this is partly coming from the teams that, you know, we want to control the situation. These are single source parts are not supposed to be touched, you're not supposed to be doing things with them. And we're going to amp up the penalties. Well, they've done that. And now they're seeing more penalties and they and they continue to, to ramp it up. And, you know, as we saw in the point situation there, you know, as Chase Briscoe goes from four points out of a playoff spot to 124 points back with losing the 120 points. So, uh, you know, he he's he's in a must win situation. And this is a team in a car that really has not shown that it can really compete for wins on a regular basis. And even if this team gets in the playoffs, um, you know, as of right now, they've got, uh, you know, they'd be down 25 playoff points. Obviously, he's got a win to get in, so he'd get five playoff points, but he's still going to be in a negative category for playoff points. That's going to force him to have to win in each round of the playoffs to advance, or otherwise he's going to be eliminated. So this, this is the penalty that keeps on giving. It's not just hard now. But it's really, you know, throughout the rest of the season. And if so, for some reason they make it into the playoffs. If we had seen what we saw from the team in the playoffs last year, because the 14 team were part of the playoffs and they were one of the teams that kind of were a dark horse and were able to get it done 
in races that were very important to move on to the, you know, round after round, if we had seen that team early this season, I wouldn't be as worried, but we have not seen that kind of performance and that caliber of a team so far this season. So for me, I don't see Chase in the 14 team winning and making the playoffs. That is off the table for me. Yeah, and I think it opens up a spot for somebody else. I mean, 10 winners so far this season, six spots to go with 12 races left. Does that does that open it up for, you know, somebody else? You know, I, I look at, uh, you know, some different guys. Um, you know, is, it, is this, you know, Chris Busher, And you look at what RFK Racing's been able to do with Brad Keselowski and Chris Busher. They're in playoff spots right now. They've kind of picked up some uh, performances here. Is this something that helps them? Or is this somebody, you know, Daniel Suarez has been struggling with track house. Track house racing hasn't won yet this season. Does this help uh, get Daniel Suarez a little bit closer to making the playoffs? So I think it really kind of changes some things by taking somebody out in essence, other than having to win. And it really kind of opens the door for a few other guys that really need some help getting into the playoffs. Hi, I'm Parker Kligerman. For more access like this from Pit Road, be sure to click and subscribe to the Motorsports and NBC YouTube channel.